for me, just the fact that um, when we were shooting Iron Man in 2007, he gets shrapnel in his heart, and then Yin Sen puts a metallic tokamak reactor in his chest to keep the shrapnel out of his heart. I mean, it's beyond uh, metaphoric. You know, it's literally the physicalization of it. And I think that's why Stan Lee and the whole just Marvel lexicon is so, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, you still got Thor and Hulk and these other things, but at the, at the heart of it, these are all, you know, they're just these archetypes of kind of broken people. I appreciate that there's a modicum of desperation going on in this during the Civil War of it all. He's like, man, we need backup and who's available and all that. And he kind of got a lead on a prospect, kind of like a baseball scout. Um, and then, uh, fortunately, he just develops this this belief in uh, Mr. Parker. First of all, Tony is, is unlike many superheroes, he's been in a committed relationship for some time. But just like, you know, if you have a nice wife, she'll say, oh, you can flirt, just don't do anything about it. And um, I, I really wanted to play that up because, you know, the Aunt May was remarkably different previously, and I've known Marissa for a long time, and she's just a, a perfect... Uh, you, you look at the way that Spider-Man Homecoming is cast, it tells you everything you need to know about what a fresh start this, this franchise is getting. You know what it's like, you gotta, you, you, your kid turns 16, and that means that they're supposed to be able to drive. But, you know, now there's all those apps where you can find out where they are. It's kind of like that. He's attempting in his own half-assed way to do some modern parenting. And also the stakes are a lot higher than are you going to get a ticket or be an offender bender. I mean, you know, lest we forget, he pulled Peter Parker into life and death situations shortly after meeting him uh, just, uh, just a year or so ago. He's self-aware enough to know that he might not be making the right decisions, but you do what you can, and he's, uh, he's a lot more personable than he used to be. Um, also, if you think about all the, the times he's been up against uh, these insurmountable odds and situations and all that, you know, um, it is a little bit the idea of what we were talking about earlier, too, of, you know, you're looking for folks you can kind of uh, pass the ball to in case you got to take a powder. In a way, I think Tony looks at him as, wow, you know, this is a, a, a really capable kind of, he's got a good moral psychology. He, he doesn't have the limitations that Tony was born into by being in this military industrial complex family. This movie is really fun. It's really well conceived. It's highly entertaining. It really it takes full advantage of all of the possibilities that you would hope uh, a new iteration of Spider-Man would have. It really delivers. It, it depends on where you join the party. There's an argument to be made that um, you know, sitting on uh, a, a podium with Kevin Feige, with uh, Michael Keaton and, you know, Amy Pascal, you're going like, who really started this when? It's just something that generationally speaking, it just kind of, it, it, it seems to still have legs, you know, and, and I say that as a, a huge fan of the, of the Spider-Man comics and it's, it's Peter Parker that introduced me to this universe to begin with. So for me, it's a homecoming.
when you see it back or you get the feedback from an audience or from people who are seeing it and reviewing it, you go, yeah, you, you were right to do that version of it, not this version. Because, you know, it's always a game of degrees and inches and all that stuff. But also for me, seeing all this young talent coming in and, and uh, you know, they've been influenced by me and, and Michael Keaton. And, and now we're, we're actually, speaking of homecoming, we're kind of feeling like, you know what, the, the kids are, these kids are, are pretty damn good. 